All right, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Art of Adjusting in 2017 webinar for today. And this kicks off another class that we're doing. And I'm excited about this upcoming class, the Art of Adjusting. I don't think I've ever done a class just on adjusting, or if I have, it's been a long, long time. And I think this is one of the most important topics, especially uh, with us lurking at the highest levels ever in the market, and the volatility is low and a lot of concern for people. What do I do if the market goes down or how do I fix a trade if it goes against me? So that's what we're going to talk about today, the art of adjusting in 2017. Welcome to everybody. This is your first time joining us in a webinar. Welcome. If it's your second or 50th time, welcome also. A little bit on my background, I went down to the CBOE in 1982. Yes, I graduated from DePaul University in Chicago as a finance major, and all I knew from all my finance courses is I didn't want to work in banking, right? The fear of wearing a suit to work scared the daylights out of me and working in a cubicle doing something. I'm sure if your banker's out there, don't be mad at me. It just seems, ah, right? So I walked one day, I was at DePaul University as a finance major, and I had taken a class. My professor's still there. Carl Luft taught a class on options trading, and I just got fascinated. I heard all this talk on options. He says, yeah, there's an options exchange about two, three blocks down the street. CBOE, are you stinking kidding me? Right? So I ended up going down there. You know, I'll tell you the, the, how I ended up down there. So I'm getting out of school one day at about 1.30, ready to take the train back home. I see all these guys getting out of work. Well, that was to the board of trip, but guys getting out of work wearing khakis, T-shirts, and gym shoes, and we're really excited. I thought, you know what? This seems real interesting. Right? These guys, get, they look happy, so I went down there and I started working down there. It was unlike any environment uh, I ever, ever have worked in in my life. And I ended up staying down there for 25 years. I worked with a very successful specialist firm, uh, basically with John and Pete Nigerian uh, for most of the 20 years, 20-some 20, 20 years down there. John and Pete are those two, but you ever see those two good looking bald guys on Fast Money and CNBC? You ever see those guys? That's who I worked with for about 20, 20 some years. Great guys. We had a lot of fun. And uh, they have ponytails. Best bosses I ever had working with those guys. Uh, I'm a lot older than Pete. Um, Pete's the young one. John's maybe a year older than I am. But anyways, during that period of time, we were specialists at the CBOE, and that's where you learned. That's where we learned a lot of adjust how to fix trades when they went wrong. And, you know, we traded through the 1987 crash, the Internet debacle. And so for, for a lot of you who've traded just over the last two, three years, your perspective on what could go wrong and the downside is very limited. You say, Dan, why is it limited? Because we haven't stinking had any real downside, right? What have we done the last four years? We've gone up. Have we had a few bumps? Yeah, but that's like, you know, baby bumps, right? And But bottom line is whether we go up, whether we go down, whether we go down fast or up fast, right? Whether the volatility is high, like we are, or whether the volatility is low and we're grinding up like we have, or whether the volatility is low and we're going up fast like we did last month. You agree? If you look at the last month, the last month of trading in the SPX, um, in the last month in SPX, we've had, I was just looking at this earlier, Basically, SPX hasn't moved that much in terms of close to close out of the last 22 trading days. We've had 11 days of a zero to three point move. So I'm just looking close to close. We've had four to six days. We've had a five point move. We've had three days, a seven to nine day move, seven to nine point move. 
two days where we've had a 10 to 12 point move and one day a 13 to 15 point move. A standard deviation in the SPX is about nine points. So really only three days in the last month have we moved a standard deviation or nine points, which doesn't seem like much, it's just the volatilities are lower. Now the previous month, we had a little more rocking and rolling. We had four days over 15 point move, a 24 point move, a 38 point move, a 24 and 19. But the point is, as I've always said, this is a stinking craft, right? Now, probably be better English if I said, this is a craft. But you have to, I mean, you have to learn. How do I handle a fast moving up market like two months ago, where the market goes up fast at times and the volatility is low? How do I handle a grinding up uh, market with very low volatility like we've had over the last uh, month? How do I handle, if we do go down, usually a fast move down and the volatilities pump up, how do I handle that? How do I set my trades up at the beginning and how do I adjust it if it goes against me? And I think those are all, uh, that, those are all things, but that's part of a craft, right? I mean, we'd all love a sheet of paper that says, here's how I adjust calendars and butterflies and that's it, and you're set and you're gonna make three grand a month, right? But that's thinking Disney World. This is a craft. You learn through lots of trades. But I traded 23 years in the pits at the CBOE, eight hours a day, right? We were probably trading, probably our little option firm probably traded close to 100,000 options a day. And so the one thing I'm most thankful about down there, not that I was the greatest trader in the world or the smart, what do they call that? The smartest crayon in the box, you ever hear that one? Um, but I was privileged to be in an environment where or I was with one of the best option trading firms by far in the business, that's a fact, the firm was, and be part of it, right? Just be part of the team. I was able to play with, you know, a team I thought equivalent of Golden State Warriors, you know, very good team, and be part of it, and you learn, right? Fast moving market, uh, slow moving, and you, how to tweak these things. And so, you know, it's important that you learn the crap, but the, the biggest thing is this. Most of you, we could tell you, or we could say, okay, if the market starts going down, do this or that, but until you go through it, it's very difficult. Right? You know, until you, my grandma used to iron downstairs and she'd have the hot iron. And she said, don't touch the iron, it's hot. Well, one day I planted my whole hand on the iron and I screamed bloody murder. Well, she goes, now you know, right? And, and most of you might have a plan, what are you gonna do on the downside? But until you go through it, you don't know. So let's start talking about this topic today, but I wanna encourage you, this is a craft. Right? If we go down, right, most of you are gonna look like three stooges on the downside. And most of you look like three stooges on the upside. That's okay. It's learning the craft, this is a craft, right? We forget that it took most of you in your career a long time to get good. But in options, you wanna get good by a, a webinar or a quick book, right? So, John Dory says, I did the same thing with an Italian cookie iron. All right, so let's jump in, have a little bit of a discussion on this today. I hope this is be a little bit of a help to you. This is for educational purposes today. So today is just an informative class. We'll go over some stuff. We'll talk about adjustments a bit. But this is a preview of a new class I'm going to be doing two weeks from today called The Art of Adjustments. The class schedule and cost are here. Uh, October 25th, two weeks from today, I will do the class at 1 p.m. Central. Uh, uh, that Friday, Oct 27th, Jay Bailey, who's worked with me for many years, excellent trader and teacher, will be teaching, and he's got a great presentation. I think it's one, he did it, I did a seminar one time in Boston recently, in the last year, and it just, and he's been tweaking and changing this, but this is one of the best presentations 
on adjustments I've ever seen. I mean, he's just, he's very thoughtful, did a great job on it. And so that'll be the 27th. I'll do November 1st and 3rd. So these are Wednesdays, Fridays at 1 p.m. Central. The cost is $197. All classes are live, but they're recorded if you work, right? And you can ask questions on class page even after class is done. So if you're working, you can't make a session or two or four. Um, there's only four. Just watch it when you get home and ask questions. All the questions come to me. And you could ask me questions anytime. Uh, you can ask me questions a month after the class, two months after the class, three months after the class. And most of the time, I'd say 90% of the time, uh, all, the, all the questions are answered the day you send them. Unless you send it at like 9 at night, uh, it's the next day. Um, each class is a minimum one hour. I don't have a good, I usually go longer than an hour, but it's minimum an hour, and this will be focused on adjusting. And I think with the timing of the market and everything, this is the perfect timing to focus on, hey, what to happen if something actually moves against you, right? I mean, people doing covered rights and cash-secured puts and put credit spreads have had a stinking honeymoon over the last three years, right? You say, why? You didn't have to know risk management. Why didn't you have to know risk management? Because the market just kept going up, so you look like you know what you're doing. So um, here will be some, this will be a big help to you. We'll be going over some different strategies, different adjustments, philosophy of adjustments, just so you feel more comfortable when things really start moving, which they will. So let's talk about what is an, just so we're all on the same page, what is an adjustment definition? An adjustment is, fixing a position when it goes against you, right? And I'm going to be going over an example today of a put credit or call credit spread. And so you can see, you're going to be able to see where an adjustment fits in, right? Adjustment is not the main, in my risk management plan, the adjustment is maybe the third most important out of four things. And you say, Dan, I thought the adjustment was the most important thing. No, 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 no. So I need to, when I'm talking about how to fix a position, that's got to come within a framework. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Do adjustments work? Yeah. What do it, I mean, why do them? What do you guys think? Do they work and why do you do them? Why would you do an adjustment? Why would you fix a trade that's going against you? What, what, what does that do? Does it work out? Can you make money? Well, what do you, for people who've ever done an adjustment, why do you do it? Anybody in here ever do an adjustment on a trade, try to fix a trade when it goes against you? Yeah, reduce risk. Thank you, Carrie. You reduce the risk. What else? Dino said, do a little longer duration. Kurt says, try to salvage a trade. Uh, Robert says, yeah, get a chance to recover. The bottom line is if something's going against you, if the market's going up or going down, and as Jeff put, give the trade a chance to become profitable. So you're basically, you're extending if we're going up or going down, what are you doing? You're, you're extending your break-even points, right? You're giving yourself more room or maybe the market to back off a little bit. Do you agree? So you're basically, you're, you're extending your profit curve. You're extending the profitable area of where you can make money, right? Now, I'm going to go over in a couple minutes what is much more important, in my opinion, than adjusting. Are they too complicated? Well, I think if you're learning options at the beginning, it's too complicated, right? Anything is too complicated when you're starting. Agree? So... The example I'm going over today, I'll give you kind of a Mr. T starter kit, risk management, and, 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 and how I would do adjustments or not do adjustments. And then, uh, to me, it really comes down to it, keep things simple when you first start, you have a basic risk management plan, but as you're trading more and more and more, then you get into adjustments. So I, I think adjustments can be complicated when you start, um, but when you understand them, they do a great service, right? They basically, I mean, you think about it. 
how about, what a wonderful thing that is, that you can make an adjustment, increase your probabilities of winning, extend your break-even points. I mean, it's a wonderful thing. They're very important adjustments on their own. You know, adjustments on their own, as you're going to see, is they're very just simple trades, like buying a call or buying a call debit spread. The goal of adjustments is to keep you in the trade longer, extend your break-evens, widen your profitable area so you can win, right? The goal of adjustments is so you can stay in the trade longer and eke out a profit. Dino says, I even had trouble learning how to eat when I first started. My parents said, and I know I mastered that one. Yes, you did. Um, um, <laughs> all right. So to me, this adjustments has to fit into something, right? Adjustments on their own are like, okay. Uh, so adjustments, and I'll walk through an example with you, as part of Dan's four-step risk management plan. So step one is, whatever the trade you're doing, how do I set it up to trade in the current environment? And how do I set this trade up? Step two is profit target and max loss. And for beginners, I would just say stick with step one and two, and I'll make a note on that. Step three, when to adjust. Step four, how to adjust. So. You say, Dan, you mentioned a little bit earlier, there's something more important than how to adjust. What do you think that is? What do you think is even more important than how you adjust, when to adjust? Let me ask you guys a question, right? If Ned or Dino were at your house and they start bleeding out of control in the leg and you said, you know, Dino, you know, Ned, I got a nice Italian dinner, fettuccine alfredo with some fresh chicken and nice toss salad. Let's eat the dinner. And then when we're done with the dinner, we'll go to the emergency room and have them fix the bleeding. And, you, and Dino and Ned say, you know, I'm a little concerned about the bleeding. What if I bleed too much, I can die. And, and it says, hey, don't worry about it, Dino or Ned. Don't worry about it. You know why? Because there's a mic, there's there's the top doctor in the world is at the hospital. Right, I'll fix you. Don't worry about it. So after dinner, they have a nice, nice Italian dinner, and they go to the emergency room. And by now, Ned and Dino are are long dead, and they say, "Oh, don't worry about it. We got the best doctor in the world." And he's like, "Hey, I forgot to tell you, if you're dead, I can't fix you." And and what's the point besides it being a bad analogy? When to adjust is the most important thing. In other words, if you, I get this all day. If there's not a day over the last 15, 16 years that I've been teaching that I don't get somebody calling me up, or at least a week, say, hey, Dan, you know, I might have taken a class with you, or I didn't take a class and I saw you on a webinar, and, and here's my problem. Can you fix my trade, right? Please fix my trades. Sprinkle the Peter Pan sauce on it. And I'll always say, hey, how much are you down? You know, 500 bucks. What's the most you wanted to be down? 100, right? In other words, when to adjust is the most important thing. You can't use a Michael Jordan type adjustment if it's too late. And so when you adjust is crucial. You could, if you adjust at the right time, I want you to hear this thought. If you adjust at the right time and use the wrong adjustment, but you adjust at the right time, you might use, which I might consider a wrong adjustment, but you adjust it, you're going to do a much better than someone who adjusts at the wrong time and use the great adjustment because it's too stinking late. So now step two, whoever said step two, technically you're right. Step two, I'm sorry. Step two is probably the most important thing, right? Whoever said that, you get six points, right? Step two is the most important by far out of the four steps. Having a profit target and a max loss and sticking to that, very disciplined, right, is the number one most important. Number two is when to adjust. Number three, 
Well, I'll be honest with you. Number three, I think, is the setup. Number four is how to adjust. So the adjustment's important, but do you get my point here, folks? Most people will talk about adjustment, but they're not, they don't have a profit target and max loss. They're not concerned about the setup, and they don't know when to adjust. So is adjustment important? It is. But it's in the context of a well-thought-out plan. Do you understand that? So the actual adjustment out of my four steps here is right where it should be. It's, it's the least important. Yes, John says don't go to Dan's for dinner if you're already gravely injured, uh, unless you're gravely injured but you want your last good meal. All right, so I wanted to bring this slide up because it's perspective, folks, right? If you're adjusting after your – if you're adjusting without having a profit target and max loss number two, you're going to adjust when you're down too much money. So basic types of adjustments, right? I'm not, you know, during the class and Jay will be going over, we'll be talking about a little more advanced adjustments in some of the parts using calendars and, you know, a lot of different type of adjustments. But your basic type of adjustments, there's three. Buying a single option like a call or put if we go up or down. So if it goes up and maybe I need to fix something, I could buy a call. If it goes down and I have some type of trade, whatever the trade is, I can buy a put. And then at least kind of you can, you can, you know, fix a trade. Or, which will have less effect on the decay or, or negative theta, you could buy a call or put debit spread or a vertical spread, right? That's going to be less risk than a call or put if we go up or down. And, and the third thing, I could buy stock or futures against it, right? So, so – these are probably your three most common types of adjustments um, that I would go over. Now, one more slide here before I go over an example with you and put this all together is what are some factors affect, affecting adjustments? When I'm getting ready to make an adjustment, there's like four or five things that are circling through my mind that will that, and that's what we'll be talking about in the class, that will determine which adjustment I do. People always say to me, all right, which is the most misused, there's two very misused words in the, in the language of options, right? There's two usually mis, uh, words that are misused in the world of options. Conservative, conservative is, mis you know, people say, well, I'm doing this for certain, strategy and it's conservative, and I look at the strategy and I go, no, it's not, right? But factors affecting adjustments. So these five variables are what I kind of process in my skull as I'm getting ready to make an adjustment. And based on that is what I'll pick for an adjustment. So people want what's the best adjustment, but there's pluses and minuses. I'm sorry, right? So factors affect affecting adjustments. Volatility. Right now, we're some of the lowest levels in VIX in your lifetime. And so in a low volatility environment, I may be more apt to use long calls or puts uh, or at-the-money debit spreads or you know, some uh, adjustments that, that maybe in a different environment I wouldn't. Price levels. We're at the highest levels in the market since Julius Caesar came to Chicago and opened up the first hot dog stand, right? So will that affect me? Yeah, it affects maybe how I look at some of these adjustments. The other thing is duration. Duration is very important, right? If I'm buying a put or call 20 days out versus 40 days out or buying a debit spread 20 days out or 40 days out, how those react are different. And then Here's a very important thing I look at, number four, and then I'll get to a few questions. Um, cost or effect on margin of a trade. Some people might make an adjustment and it doubles their capital. You know, so I like adjustments that don't jack up the capital in most cases. And then how does it affect my portfolio Greeks? You know, again, this is a very balance, this is a balancing act, and that's why we're going to devote four classes to this. Because, you know, it's like you ever see the commercials with the cholesterol drugs. Oh, yeah, we'll take a cholesterol 
take this new cholesterol drug, and then 99% of the commercial is there's 700 effects to it. So your cholesterol will go down, but your liver you'll lose, right? Your lips will turn purple, your toes will fall off, but it'll lower your cholesterol. So to me, it's very important when I make an adjustment that I have to digest it with these five variables because if I make an adjustment and it doubles my capital, I don't think I like that. If it makes an adjustment and you know we're in a low volatility environment, if it make if I make an adjustment and I'm getting the adjustment gets me more short vega, meaning I have risk if the volatility goes up, do I want to do that? So I have to look at it in terms of these five variables. It's very important. All right. I'm going to go over one example to kind of tie in everything I talked about today into an example. But let me just take a second to go. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, zip them over to me. Dan, what does one do when you are in a loss and the reasonable adjustment costs money and the market reverses increasing your loss? Do you change your max loss permitted with the adjustment? This might be a little beyond, again, I don't want to spend too much time on, because some of these can get into, now I've got to determine, uh, do you increase your max loss and do you change? Uh, RJM, you could, you could send me an email on that, but I'll just give you a quick answer to this. If you have something more specific, this is a little more advanced question, but he says, Dan, what does one do when you are, so you have a loss and the reasonable adjustment costs money, most of them do, and the market reverses increasing your loss, do you change your max loss permitted with the adjustment? Um, I usually don't, so no, I don't change my max loss permitted. Uh, you know, I could spend three hours just on this question, but uh, in most situations, no, but there's so many, so many variables on this question. I don't want to take an hour to go over it, but uh, I'll just leave it at no for now. I'll say that. All right, next one. Uh, uh, L says three adjustment types uh, add risk, not reduce it. No, not true. Not true. So if you're, if you have a, uh, if you have a credit spread on in the calls and the market goes up and you buy a debit spread, does it reduce your risk to the upside? Yes. Yeah, so these, these will reduce uh, your risk. The only way to, to reduce your risk and not increase your capital or to make an adjustment and not increase your capital is just take some of it off, take some of your position off. Richard says, my challenge with adjustments is that I'm typically at work while the market is moving and therefore adjusting at the right time is a big challenge. Well, one of the, so the question says, my or comment is my challenge with adjustments is that I'm typically at work while the market is moving and therefore adjusting at the right time is a big challenge. I get it, but I think there's two things. You know, if you're going to trade, you're gonna to have to make you know, I think that's one of the things, Rich, is 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 kind of meshing your work schedule with trading. One of the suggestions is, in this day and age of good software and technical stuff, you can put alerts in, right? You can put an alert if SPX hit a certain price, they can text you, right? Now, if you can't be uh, if you can't be even notified if you're that busy at work, or or you can't even do anything during the day, then you're going to have to learn to uh, have some, uh, if you can't have alerts in, you're going to have to have some types of orders that if it hits a certain point, you know, maybe put a Band-Aid on, buy a call or put till you can get some time to look at it. So it all depends. I mean, I, I think we've, there, there are solutions to most challenges of work environment. You know, we've been mentoring students for 15, 16 years, and, you know, most of our students are working in some capacity. And, and, you know, you can, you can work that stuff out is what I'm saying. Let me just get through a few more of these questions. So I want, and then I'll just finish up this key example here. 
Wayne says adjustments in weeklies, two to five days, are they reasonable? Again, let's just remember, if we're, if we're saying, what are weeklies? Weeklies, you know, you can have weeklies uh, options that expire five days from expiration, but you can have weeklies that expire 30 days from expiration. So weeklies can be short-term and long-term options, right? But it, adjustments in weeklies, two to five days, are they reasonable? Yeah, I mean, again, it's all context, right? If I'm doing a seven-day trade, and the first day in a seven-day trade, can I make an adjustment? Absolutely, right? I might make the adjustment and maybe an expiration a little bit further out, but absolutely. But there's different considerations when you're adjusting seven-day trades versus 50 or 60, right? Uh, let's dive in here. Any other questions, you can feel free to send me, Dan at sharedamentoring.com. Let's get through this material. So here's a 30-day call credit spread. So I'm just taking a strategy just to use an example. So how this whole adjustments works into play in this context of the overall risk management plan, okay? So here's just an example. So I'm not, I just picked this 30-day call credit spread not because it's the best strategy or worst strategy, not because uh, I'm recommending this strategy, only because I felt that most people are familiar with credit spreads. Wouldn't you agree? Are, are most of you familiar with credit spreads? So as I'm kind of walking through this idea of adjustments and risk management, if I did it with an example that people are familiar with, right? So I thought credit spread would be pretty calm versus doing some kind of weird butterfly or double calendar or whatever. So let me work through this. I'm not going to answer questions while I'm working through this. And then when I'm done, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Um, maybe just hold your questions. And then when I ask, you could, you can, or, or, or you could put your questions in, but I'm going to answer them when I'm done. So here's an example of a 30-day call credit spread, right? So am I saying we should do a 30-day call credit spread today? I'm not, even though I wouldn't mind doing one, but I'm just using this as an example. So. So here we have here, here's an example that I used. I think the slide was from October 9th, the slide, which was Monday of this week. SPX was 2547, which is in red here. And I sold the, uh, here, let me get this here. And I sold the uh, Nova 8 expiration 2585 call. Um, and I bought the Novate 2595 call. So with SPX at 2547, I sold the 2585 calls, 38 points out of the money. And I bought the 2595 calls against it. So the green graph that you're seeing would be the expiration graph, how the graph would look at expiration. The purple graph is more how it looks the day I put it on date October 9th, Monday, SPX was 2547. So with SPX of 2547, I sold an out of the money 2585 call. That was 38 points out of the money. The Novate expiration this is 30 days out. So it's a 30 day, 30 days out call credit spread. I chose the short strike. I used the delta of 20. So that just meant that it's if I sell a, if I choose a strike by selling a delta of 20, that means there's only a 20% probability we're going to finish through that strike at expiration. So I'd consider that a high probability of credit spread, probably 80% um, probability credit spread if you just look at the delta, right? Um, so that, that's what the delta of 20 uh, means that there's only a 20% probability if SPX is at 2547 on October 9th that it's going to finish above the short strike of 2585 in 30 days, right? Could it happen? Of course, but probabilities, no, right? So I did this credit spread for a $1.70 credit, bought the 2595 call, sold the 2585 for $1.70 credit. The margin or risk of the trade is 830. That's the capital you have to put up. Dan, how did you get that? 
the difference between the strikes is 10, so I have $1,000 of risk per credit spread, less the credit would be $830. So if I'm trying to make 10% on this trade, it's 10% of the margin or risk of 830, not 10% of the credit. Do you get that? So when you do one, this example of one credit spread in the calls, the, the margin that you'd have to put up at your brokerage firm or the, or the capital is 830. Right, thousand dollars width of the spreads, thousand dollars, ten points, less your less your credit is eight thirty. So if I'm trying to make ten percent, I'm doing one contract. Ten percent of this is around eighty to eighty three dollars. Does that make sense? It's a call credit spread. So I have no risk on the upside. You can see here's the profit curve. Here's zero. Here's five hundred dollars, a thousand minus five hundred minus a thousand. So if we're here. At expiration, we have a little bit of room on the upside, right? We make money 25, 85, and under at expiration. So it makes money if the market goes down. It makes money if the market's neutral, and you have some room to the upside. The position Greeks, again, this was put on Monday the 9th. SPX was 25.47 in red here. My position deltas are short 5.84, almost short 6. My gamma is minus 0.13, my theta is 4, and my vega is minus 41. Again, your Greeks are going to be much different if the expiration were 7 days or 50 days. This is a 30-day. Now, real quick, just for some of you, what does it mean if I have a minus 5.84? Let's call this minus 6 deltas. Think in terms of stock equivalent. So if I'm minus 6 deltas, and SPX goes down 10 points, I'd make about 60 bucks. If SPX went up 10 points, I'd lose about 60 bucks. So minus five, you know, a good short def, quick definition of deltas would be stock equivalent for a short move in the underlying. Obviously, gamma affects it too, but just for a quick and easy definition, delta and gamma refer to price risk, theta refers to um, time decay, and Vega refers to volatility risk. So this is the call spread example. And again, now we've got this spread. Now I'm going to talk about adjustments and the whole risk management. So is everybody with me before I get into a little bit of the, just show you a little bit how this all works. Um, what I'm doing here, this is a call credit spread. This is 30 days from expiration. It's a 10 wide call credit spread. And I talked a little bit how I chose the short strike and a little bit of the risk. So is that clear? Any questions on what I'm doing here? Um, and again, I did this on Monday, VIX was 10. The short call was a 20 delta. That's how I picked the short strike. And there's 30 days from expiration. So again, Rich says, turn it into an iron condor. Well, today I'm just going to keep it simple, just to call credit spread so we can discuss this plan. Because here's the problem. As you get into the plan, that's the important thing. Anybody could put a trade on. Do you agree? I can go to Chipotle right now, and in an hour, I can teach the cooks to put on credit spreads, right? 80% probability credit spreads. Do you agree? In other words, I could go over there. If I, if I stopped at Chipotle a year ago, on my way back from visiting my girls in South Carolina. They go to college there. And let's say I stopped at a Chipotle in South Carolina. Could I have told them in, in an hour, here's what I want you to do every week. Go and do a 30-day put credit spread, sell a 20 delta, leave it alone, just keep making the, those things and, and you'll have money hit your account. Those guys would have called me back after a year and said, we have no idea what we're doing but there's quite a bit more money in our account than there was a year ago, right? So, so putting a trade on, you can still make money, but if you're going to be in the business a long time, if you're going to trade bigger and try to make three to $10,000 a month or something, you got to know what you're doing. So now let's go into this four step risk management plan setup. So I'm just, Again, we're just going through one example today. 
that's what the class is for, for four weeks to get into the nitty gritty. But, well, this is nitty gritty, but to get into more specific strategy. So step one on this, set up duration 30 days. We did a 30 day dura trade. You know, what, what would be a reason someone might do a call credit spread in today's market? You think there's any good reasons? Yeah. Yeah, we're at all-time highs. We do it on the call side. And if we do a call credit spread, do we have any volatility risk? No. 30 days out, duration, short strike, 30 deltas, long strike, 10 points further out of the money. Calls or puts are doing it in the calls. So setup is designed to, based on setup, is, is designed to, based on the current environment. That's how I look at setup. Whatever trade you're doing, butterfly, credit spread, iron condor, I always look at it and say, based on the volatility levels in the market, based on the price levels in the market, where's SPX? Based on what's going on in the market, has it been moving fast or slow? Based on is there, is there earnings coming up, how do I want to set up an iron condor or butterfly or credit spread? Do I want to do calls or puts? in this market. Does that make sense? So setup is based on the current volatility and price levels and what's going on in the market, how do I set it up, right? Can I do an iron condor in any volatility environment or a butterfly or a calendar? I think I can, yeah. Yeah, any volatility environment, even if it's low. It's just how am I gonna set, it's not that you can't do credit spreads or an iron condor in the current market, it's just how am I going to set it up, right? So does everybody understand and set up, number one? Number two, right? So, so do you get what set up is? And, and think in terms of this. It's raining in Chicago right now, right? If I want to go to the park after we're done here, what's my setup? Really? What's my setup? You say, Dan, what's the weather environment? What's the volatility? Well, it's raining pretty heavy, right? So if I'm going to walk five blocks to the park, I better bring an umbrella, period. You know, you say a raincoat. Well, it's not too cold. It's honestly, it's not too cold, so I'm comfortable in a polo shirt, but I need an umbrella. So I think where people miss, what we try to do is, how do I set up these different trades in the current environment, right? You tweak it a little bit. Now, number two, profit target and max loss. This is the most important thing, right? Much more important than the setup, much more important than when I adjust, if I get to that, but much more important than the adjustment. It's the profit target and max loss. What's my profit target when I'm going to take it off, but what's my max loss? And when I hit my max loss, I get out, right? So, on this trade, my profit target would be 10% on this trade. Again, I'm not getting into a whole discussion on during this on why I take 10% or 8%, but we'll get into that. Profit target, 10% of your margin or risk. So in this example, my margin or risk was 830. So I take 10% of 830 or about 80 bucks. So I'd have an order in to buy back the spread Right, the original credit was a dollar seventy. I'd have an order in the buy it back at ninety cents. So I'm looking to make close to fifty percent of the credit in this particular example. I don't it doesn't always work out that way. But so again, if I'm my credit was a dollar seventy, I'm trying to make ten percent of the margin or risk of eight thirty. So it's about eighty bucks. Right? So if I sell it for a dollar seventy and I buy it back for 90 cents, that means for every one contract, I made, um, if I sell it for $1.70 uh, and I buy it back for 90 cents, 90, that means I made 80 bucks, which is about 10%. Right? So I have an order in, I sold it for $1.70 credit, buy it back for 90 cent debit. Right? And the 90, so making the difference between $1.70 and 90 would be about 80 be about half the credit, right? So that's my profit target. The max loss would be, I'm looking to max losses, I want my max loss a little greater than my profit target, give the chance, chance for the probabilities to work a little bit, 
would be 15% of the 830 or about $125. So if the original $1.70 credit expands and goes past 295, I would need to close the credit spread for my max loss because I'd be down around 15%. So I, have to, I can't be losing much more than I'm making. So right there, the setup, profit target, and max loss, that's enough for most beginning traders, right? And I put here, note, for beginners, just do step one and two. After you have done 10 to 12 credit spreads and know what you're doing, then I'd include step three and four into four-step risk management plan. All right, once I've done a bunch of spreads and I'm more comfortable, now you get into a little more, uh, now you get into the adjustments. Step three, when to adjust. And again, I'm just trying to walk you through a plan here without getting into everything, but um, remember we sold the delta of the short call at 20. So I just put when, when the delta of the short call hits 28. So that's basically when you're doing credit spreads, when the delta of your short option calls or puts increases by about eight, right? You're starting to get into the bad neighborhood. Uh, Carrie says, Carrie, thank you. I might've done a typo. Carrie says, I think on the initiation of this spread, you meant 20 delta, but you have written 30. Yes, thank you. In set, thank you, Carrie. In number one setup, I put 30 deltas um, that should be 20. I think that's the one typo, but yeah. Uh, isn't that amazing? I go over these a couple times before to make sure the typos and I still mess up. Yeah. Uh, it's funny. I have, I'll have to tell you this real quick. It's, 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 when I was in England, we were staying at a bed and breakfast and the funniest lady in the world was talking there. And I said, you know, when you get a chance, she gave me a cup of, you know, a pot of tea, and I said, when you get a chance, could you please give me uh, some sugar? And my wife was there with me, and she says to my wife, and she's laughing hysterically, and she says, oh, you have man eyes. I said, what do you mean I have man eyes? She says, the sugar's right in front of your face, right? And my wife thought that was the funniest thing in the world. So whenever... And I'll ask my wife, you know, where's the cheese? You know, you open the refrigerator, it's right in front of you. Oh, you have man eyes. I don't know if you ever heard that. To hear this lady from London uh, say it. Anyways, all right, so that's a typo. So let's get to step four. How do we adjust? And there's many, again, that's we're going to spend four weeks on, is looking at those five criteria that I talked about, price, volatility, how much you increase your capital, all those different elements, picking the right adjustment. But in this particular example, how to adjust, in this particular example, buy the call debit spread and reduce your short deltas and price risk on the upside. So I've given you exactly buy one Nova 8 expiration 2585 call. So what I'm doing in the example I gave, right, if you, if you go up and look at the slide here, I'm buying in my short call and just, I'm buying the 2585 call, which I'm short, and selling the 2590 call. So I'm basically, on the upside, reducing my width by, or my risk by re reducing the width of the call credit spread from 10 to 5. So you can see here, um, buy the 2585 call and sell the 2595 call. I also said, Another adjustment, I could also buy a long call. Volatilities are very cheap now, and the Novate expiration to reduce my position short deltas by half to two-thirds. But here's the bottom line, folks. I hope you got a little bit of appreciation today by me going over this, where this adjustment falls in. It has to come in the perspective of a plan, or it means nothing on its own, right? If you're adjusting, without a plan and a profit target and max loss, you're in the middle of the ocean on a boat that you don't know how to drive and you don't know what's going on, right? It doesn't matter that you had a nice boat if you don't know how to drive it. And, 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 and it's, it's all perspective. So I hope that helped a little bit. If you have any questions, I'll stay around here. Do me a favor, if you, ask some, if you had any questions and I didn't answer it, if you can type it in again, that would be that way. I can just see them. I don't have to scroll through everything. Again, 
class starts in two weeks, it should be a big help to you because we're really going to nail this subject big time. And we'll be talking about a lot of the different types of spreads you do and how we would adjust and why was one adjustment maybe work better than the other in this environment and which adjustment would I do in this environment and why. And I think it'll help you. Charles says, can you discuss what to do after you have, after you have adjusted? Um, again, none of these are quick answers, but after I adjusted, I stick with my, my plan. Right? I mean, unless it, it, again, it depends on the adjustment, and we'd have to go over that. But um, once I make an adjustment, I'm still looking at my original profit, my profit target and max loss. I may tweak that a little bit, and we'll talk about that in class. But again, step two, profit target and max loss is always the most important. But after I make an adjustment, I may tweak my profit target and max loss a little bit, and we'll talk much more about that in class. Laura says, will you be showing adjustments for butterflies and calendars and iron condors? Yes, I definitely will be using examples of those strategies and talking about them in lieu of exactly the current environment. So I'll go through this four-step risk management plan with current trades, live trades I'll do. I'll do live trades every class. I'll show you exactly, here's the butterfly I would do today and why. Here's exactly the butterfly I do. I'll put it on live. I'll show you the setup, why I would put the butterfly on like I would do it today, how I would manage it, how I would adjust in the current environment. So on, on butterflies, calendars, uh, cash secured puts, most of the popular strategies, credit spreads, show exactly how I would do it today on a live trade, how I would manage it. Um, and, and, and walk you through all this. So you can see, and we'll follow the trades through, so it'll be very transparent. Will adjustments be oriented around specific strategies like butterfly and iron condor? Some of them will. I mean, obviously, I can talk about the different adjustments on their own, but it, it kind of, you can wrap your arms around it when I talk about them with a strategy, right? It's kind of like, it's tough. I will talk about them a little bit on their own, and, and Jay will do that, but I will be talking about them in the context of strategies. You most usually adjust the same expiration as the original position. Not always. Again, and that, that's one thing we'll talk about. I'll talk about when I would adjust using a different expiration than the current one. Usually more with when I'm doing shorter duration trades, Helen, than it. Uh, especially if maybe I'm buying a call or put, I will go a further expiration. But I will clarify that a lot, and, and, and that's why I think it's important we'll go through examples. And I might go through two live trades during, you know, the, at the least I'll do is a live trade for each class. Sometimes I'll do two, but I want to give you concrete examples of how this stuff works. All right, well, folks, I look forward to seeing you in two weeks. I think it'll be one of the best classes we've done because it's important that you nail this, you understand this. This is important risk management. Um, and like Helen said, even if you can't attend the classes live, you can watch them when you watch them and just ask questions, right? And they all come to me and they're answered pretty, pretty promptly. Uh, Paul says, Dan, do you ever use a series of flow charts to show adjustment details? Um, I don't, Paul, not that I think flow charts are very good. Um, I think with the risk management, this four-step risk management, I think that helps people. Um, I don't do flow charts, but I think, um, you know, if, if you're good at flow charts and you want to, I think I'll give enough information, you can make a good flow chart. So, Paul, if you want to follow, if you're good with flow charts and you want to go through with that, um, but I will be as clear as I possibly can why I would do certain adjustments, when I would do them, and I'll answer all your questions. But I think flowcharts are a very good, effective teaching tool. Uh, I just haven't done them a, a, a lot. But, um, uh, Paul, if you take the class and you do it, uh, you know, <laughs> if you do a good flowchart on this thing, uh, maybe we'll throw some portillos at you or something. Yeah, but I think that's important. Uh, Dino says this is a key part of the craft, learning 
on the journey to becoming consistent? Yeah, it is because, again, let's face it, folks, trading is not looking at a stinking chart and doing something. Any, you know, and that's not trading, right? And I still think 80% of the educators out there, you know, pull up a stinking chart. Well, what do we think? I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. What do you think? You know, and, and, and what I'm trying to get across here is let's set up a plan. Let's work at this thing. So, all right, folks, well, thank you so much. Appreciate your patience, and we will see you two weeks from today. You can sign up. Go to Sheridan Mentoring. You can sign up and uh, look forward to seeing you. Thank you.